Good morning. It is about 20 degrees here in Iowa, which isn't cold by Midwestern standards. It is cold, however, if you are a little Luscom with a Stromberg or Stromberg carburetor. The Stromberg is infamously known for two things: not having an accelerator pump and not really having a mixture control. So there's a mixture control knob. However, the aircraft more or less um, compensates for altitude and um, leans your mixture as you climb. So in a way, it's very technologically advanced for a 1940s piece of equipment. On the other hand, why does it not have an accelerator pump? Like, come on, not that hard. So people are kind of split on this carburetor. Um, people either say that it's misunderstood and it's a wonderful piece of equipment, or they just take it out, put a Marvel Schleber uh, carburetor in there, and, and they call it good, and then they go on. But today I wanted to do some um, cold weather flight verification. Got the whole get up here, cold weather suit from Vietnam. Um, but basically I, I read some service bulletins and some advice on the internet. Um, which this is a good time to clarify. I'm not a mechanic, not an instructor, entertainment purposes only, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, we're gonna try some things and see how it performs in the cold and whether or not I need to start saving up for a Marvel Schleber carburetor. So first things first, let's turn the camera around here. I just plugged in the oil heater. Um, you can see that's down there. So cord up here. Going down there, there's a there's the oil sump, and that orange pad on there is a heater. I don't leave it plugged in all the time because apparently there are some concerns with corrosion happening if you do that. Now, second thing, let's take a look at this actual carburetor. So here's the engine. If we look down there, you see that little guy? Let's zoom in right there. That's the carburetor. That line here. So that copper line running down, that's your primer. And then that red lever is the quote unquote mixture control. It doesn't actually control mixture, it controls the ambient pressure inside the carburetor. So you can kind of trick the auto compensating system if you want it leaner or richer. Really doesn't do a whole lot of work under 5,000 feet. But let, let's take a look and see what that carburetor sits behind. So here's the air intake. So here's the air intake. Right behind that is the carburetor. All of this cold air coming in through here, more or less, let's take another look, you see, it goes right under the intake spider. So there's, right there. So all that cold air comes and hits that throttle body, right? And that whole area gets cold. Maybe some heat will conduct itself out of the crankcase downwards, but it's unlikely. So how do we warm up the carburetor? Well, we can use carburetor heat. So we get air run over the exhaust manifold, go back towards the carburetor. Well, if your exhaust is cold, you don't have a lot of hot air going in. So that's a problem. Um, but also oil temps. So here again, the oil sump. You know, it doesn't really get a lot of heat from the engine. Heat rises, as you can see, that's below the engine. So I'm gonna also tape up this intake here and see how that helps us with oil temps and, and possibly flyability as well. Um, so let's do that. We'll wait for the oil to warm up a little bit too. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. There we go. It's not pretty, but it's done. So that is gonna block the airflow going underneath the crankcase and uh, hitting that top part of the carburetor, hopefully. The other thing, there's a service bulletin actually that recommends you make a uh, cover for the air intake. So a one inch sheet metal or sheet aluminum offset here across down. And basically that's supposed to help keep the intake air warmer as well. Um, Obviously I'm not doing that right now, but something worth trying. So with that done, I'm gonna leave the oil plugged in a little bit longer. Uh, so I'll, I'll do the quick pre-flight here, a quick but thorough pre-flight, even though it's cold. And then um, we'll push it out and we'll go over the modified start procedure. All right, so now we're gonna do a few things quickly. The airplane's pre-flighted, just unplug the oil heater. 
you can see we're registering a temperature. It's not hot, but it's over 40, so that's good. So first, make sure master's off, mags are off, mixture's in. We're gonna, we'll unlock the primer later, we don't need that. We're gonna make throttle all the way back. We're gonna turn on fuel. Now, so that's off, that's all the way back. That's important, here's why. So we turn the prop manually by hand. And what that does, we gotta do it slowly, by the way. With the throttle being closed, the cylinders create a vacuum, a suction, which draws fuel out of the idle port in the carburetor and primes those cylinder heads with fuel. One, two, three. Keep in mind this is just spraying it right underneath the intake. This isn't actually spraying fuel in the cylinders, right? Okay, so we did that. Master on, mag's hot. Let's close the door, prop clear. Let's see how this goes. So that worked pretty well. Um, the last time I flew it this cold, I definitely didn't get it to fire this fast. Now you notice how I pulled out the carburetor heat right away, and I still have fuel in the primer. So you see how it kind of died down a little bit, added a little bit of fuel just to keep it going. What I'm trying to do is get some heat on my exhaust manifold, which then allows the carburetor heat to actually be effective. the engine warmed up a little bit I uh, throttled up a little bit higher and at this point I'm just trying to get rid of my excess primer uh, so I'm slowly feeding that in checking the um, field altitude to set the altimeter and then something interesting happened I noticed smoke in the cockpit right after I just unloaded some fuel through the primer so I pulled forward a little bit because there's usually fuel under the plane shut the airplane off not in the right order, might I add, but that's a learning experience. Ran back, grabbed a fire extinguisher, came back to the plane. The irony, of course, is that I'm wearing my fire department beanie here. So I grabbed a screwdriver to pop open the cowling. There's not a whole lot that can burn inside there, so I was really curious what was going on. I forgot to turn the fuel off. Probably should start with that next time I suspect I have an engine fire. But looking in there, there, there really wasn't anything obviously burning. So look closely here on the exhaust manifold. Do you see that stain right there? Was that there before? Luckily we just filmed the engine, so let's take a look. See, that stain wasn't there. So I think what happened is some oil dripped onto the exhaust manifold from the valve covers, that and that's what created the smoke, got sucked Prop right into clear. the cabin, freaked me out. Anyway, we're just getting more reps and cold starting this airplane, which is fine. That's a good skill to have. You can see it starts up a lot easier this time. Then as it struggles, we just add a shot of primer. Notice I forgot to pull the carburetor heat out. There we go. Let's just smoothen out a little bit. As you can imagine, a very, very thorough run-up was done. I also taxied it over to my mechanic, had him take a look, and we both concurred that it was probably just that oil drop. So, off we go to actually fly and do some flight testing. So as we're taking off here, I just want to talk about having your primer not locked. Some say that that's like a choke where it's bypassing fuel and adding more fuel and running more rich. On this airplane, there's a valve at the end of the primer line that's spring-loaded, so you actually have to overcome that pressure. The, the cylinder isn't just going to suck in extra fuel. So looking at, at our panel here, oil temperature is warming up okay, it's not quite hot yet. 
um, primer is not locked, but it's in, and uh, carburetor heat is off. So the first test I want to do is to determine how the mixture works at 3,000 feet. So we pull the mixture, and you notice how the RPM goes down right away. So what that tells me is that the engine mixture is pretty good. It's not overly rich, where me pulling the mixture leans it out, you increase RPM, and then you decrease. You notice we went straight down. Let's try it at 5,800 feet. So you notice again, as soon as we pull that mixture, RPM goes down. So we're not at a rich condition to begin with where pulling the mixture increases RPM and then it goes down. It goes down right away. Now for this test, I wanted to do a little bit of a glide to um, so cool down the engine and then add power and see how it would react. So we got carburetor heat on, mixture is in just normal rich position. So pull to idle and then we accelerate and see what happens. pull back again let's try it again so the interesting thing that happens here when I'm at idle but my um, prop is spinning at seven eight hundred a thousand rpm we are pumping a thousand rpm worth of air with 600 rpm worth of fuel right because the throttle is closed you know the carburetor doesn't know what your RPM is it just knows how much fuel to put in based on throttle position so um, it did well with that but that's something to be mindful of for this test we did a 500 foot glide um, with carburetor heat off just to see how the airplane responds you know after you come in come into the pattern you may have to do go around easy power picks up okay you know I'm, I'm being gentle with it not slamming it in and, and I'm, I'm able to add power after that 500 foot descent. You notice I'm just kind of accelerating, decelerating up to that 1500 RPM mark. Um, that's usually when it would stumble and struggle. So again, being really gentle with it, not adding all the power in at once and you can see it does fine. So let's try a longer glide. So we're gonna do a thousand foot glide, carburetor heat on, and then attempt to go around. And this might be something similar where you're, you know, on the downwind, pull power to idle, um, come into land. So I tried to simulate the pattern tried to simulate the right speed so the props turning at the same speed as it would in a pattern so again we get good good power response um, you don't need full power right away in this plane to initiate a go around so it, it really helps to know that and just take your time with putting power back in so now we're gonna do an actual um, go around, so a real landing. And I'll talk a little bit about my strategy here for, for this approach. So normally I like to pull power to idle, a beam of the numbers and do a simulated engine out every time. Um, unless there's traffic considerations or, or if it's really windy and I, I want a longer final. So in this case we come in and instead of pulling to idle, I actually keep some power in. So go to about 10 to 1500 RPM and you'll see every now and then I just add power just to make sure that engine's still there. So clearing the engine, making sure it's still working, generating a little bit of heat for the exhaust so the carb heat keeps working. But I'm finding that, you know, the, the engine isn't giving any indications where it, it's wanting to stop. It, it's performing pretty well. Again, there's a little burst of power as I was getting low and, you know, the engine responded just fine. I would probably be inclined on a very cold day to um, make my approach with more power and consider a wheel landing or a little bit long plan for a little bit longer rollout just to be able to keep that RPM above a thousand RPM. But that's just, that's not rooted on any um, CFI visual advice, right? That's just my thinking out loud. So now for the go around part, carburetor heat is still in, 
add power, once power is set, then I took out the carb heat. So I want to have carb heat for the acceleration, but I don't want it at the end, so that's when I want more power, put the carb heat in, get more power from the climb. Well, despite the initial scare, I think that went pretty well. Um, got some good data on the mixture control and how that works, which uh, kind of validates what I've read about it. Um, we did some flight testing at altitude, got the engine nice and cold and added power and, and saw how different variables like carb heat and primer helped. So overall, I think it was a productive day of flying. The GoPro died on my second approach. I ended up doing like five more um, landings just for practice sake. I think I'm favoring wheel landings here in the winter because it allows me to approach with a higher speed and then just dissipate that heat once the wheels hit the ground. So I need to get better at those. It's almost like um, jet engines that come in, you know, jets, they don't spool up very fast. So when they come in to land, they just put in a lot of drag, keep power up. Then if they need to go around, they just get rid of the drag instead of trying to increase power very quickly, right? So. Um, unfortunately, I can't add more drag, so slipping is kind of my way of adding drag, but wheel landings, um, you land at a higher speed, so I can come in a little bit faster, higher engine speed, maybe a little bit flatter glide slope, um, and uh, make a safe landing that way. So if you guys want to try and reproduce this, that's kind of what science is about, is repro <laughs> reproducibility, so um, try it safely or not, whatever. Um, open to ideas and suggestions on things that could be done differently or better. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at the next one. Stay flying.